And now time to hear about the strategy of Spain on mobility, connected cars, smart driving. And I'm very thrilled to introduce uh, Jaime Moreno, who is in charge of policies for connected and autonomous driving in Spain. He's representing it at the European level and has a very wide picture of what's happening at the global level. Where are the countries like China and, um, and India are moving? How is the development in the European Union? And what's this Spain strategy? Please welcome Jaime. Hello. Good morning and thank you for, for the introduction. Uh, well, uh, just a, a brief resume of the main figures of, of road safety. That's one of our, our main targets in Spanish DGT administration. We are in charge of traffic and mobility in Spain. Uh, as we see here in, on the last years in, in Europe, no? we have been descending the, the, rate of the, the rate fatalities in Europe, although on the, on the past three, four years, we, we, it's going to be more difficult each year to continue with this constant decreasing. Spain is one of the best countries in, in road safety. The, the figures that we have in, on the last figures that are, have been released from 2016, we are the fourth country in the European Union, so we are really doing things well. Anyway, we have to do new things in order to continue decreasing road fatalities. Uh, well, these are some of the mega trends that no, I think on these days we're, we have already uh, here before. No? We are all concentrating in these uh, big urban areas. Uh, these urban areas are really uh, complicated in order to manage all the traffic and all the mobility that people are demanding. So we really have to put new tools in order to manage uh, this new environment that we are facing. Also we are trying to reduce the, the negative outcomes of mobility no? that all of us know of fatalities, traffic congestion, emissions. We also have ambitious targets from the, from the European level, from the World Health Organization, the Paris Agreement. So we really have to do new things in order to achieve these goals that, uh, that all of us have. As, as the main philosophy in order to achieve these goals, we have Vision Zero. And it's no, all of the parts. We have to put all the things that we have in order to achieve these, these, these goals. And in this case, in the Spain, we are doing also to create this safe system in order to make uh, possible that any mistake that drivers, of course, are going to make, that they don't have to be punishable with death. We've talked also no, these days before about this disruptive environment. No? We, all, all of us have heard these words that no, in the five years, on the next 10 years, the automotive industry is going to change more than for the past 50 years. We have a hyper-connected society. New business models are appearing. We also have new services for this end user. So we really, find, we really think that there are really new opportunities in order to provide new services. And with these few benefits that all of us are looking for, like better safety, better comfort, and much more efficiency of the global service. The four mega trends that also all of us have heard during the, these past years, the autonomous vehicles, connectivity, electrification, and mobility as service, or car sharing. Now, today, we are going to concentrate in connectivity. This is some figures about the, really the impact that and the penetration rate that we have in connectivity in, in Spain. No? That here we have some figures that 80% of the drivers expect to have the same connectivity as they have in the smartphone inside of the vehicle. We also have a really important uh, penetration of embedded systems. Also, we have aftermarket solutions. All of us has a, have a smartphone in their pocket. So we really have uh, this connectivity available to provide new services. Of course, OEMs and the automotive industry is not apart from this mega trend, and all of them are providing and are offering these new connected services in order to attract these new customers that really demand connectivity in their cars. 
In this new environment, the vehicle is going to is now coming as a main actor in mobility. It was also a main actor in mobility, but now with all the data that they can generate directly from the vehicle or directly from the driver, it's going to be a major actor. Uh, we have to uh, arrange all about privacy and data holder, who is the owner of this data. And it's, we really are, uh, I would say, a positive competitiveness in order to uh, do things with this data. This data that's going to provide us really good information in order to provide better mobility services. Also, the vehicle is not just a, a font uh, of inputs and real valuable information. It's also a main data receiver. We don't have to use, or we will use it in a, in a less uh, penetration rate, the variable message signs that now we have on the road, now we could send, we have the, the opportunity to send direct message to the vehicle. So this bidirectional interaction is really a main opportunity for traffic administrations or for all the mobility service layer. We really believe in Spain that the, the way to achieve and to, to provide and to exchange this information is through the current cellular networks. We have a full coverage of almost all the road networks, so we don't really have to make new investments in order to provide this new, this new mobility in our road networks. Uh, all of us know that the data cost is really decreasing each year, and also the, the capacity of these cellular networks is really increasing at a high speed. Also, uh, when we talk this and we, we, we face it uh, with dedicated short-range communications, we see that the business model for us is really, uh, it really fits with these cellular networks and not with the other model that really needs huge investments and also cross-border compatibility. With this, we don't have or this problem. All of us has roaming. It's something that was, it's already solved in this uh, industry. Some example of the coverage of the cellular network in Spain and in Europe, we, we see that we have almost a full coverage of the road network. Also, some figures that when we, when we try to, to find if this is better or, or worse uh, than dedicated short range communication, well, here we already know that we have the devices prepared to develop this new technology. We, not, we don't need to provide new systems for the cars or new roadside units in order to provide this information. We already have all the elements to provide this information. How we manage now currently uh, traffic in Spain? Well, we have lots of roadside units in order to get these inputs. We manage all this information and then we send it back through the same roadside units. It's a really heavy investment uh, system and also in order for the maintenance is also heavily costly maintained. The new services that we can provide, the new partners as the uh, OEMs, the, the, the mobility service providers, new funds, it's really new opportunities for us to provide new services. How are we going to provide these services or how we face this connectivity? Well, we think that uh, we have to arrange new alliances with this layer of services that already exist in these win-win models where both of us this platform that we're going to launch and the mobility services uh, really find things in common in order to provide and share this information. We don't really want to make arrangements with the final driver. We want to make arrangements with this business layer that is already existing and already providing some services related to road safety. We think we can enhance the services that they are provi providing. We really want to, uh, and this is uh, some of our principles of the platform, the exchange of information has to be anonymous. We don't want any type of personal information. We just want to know some uh, concrete events with their X, Y, and the tag of the event, but we don't want to know anything about who's the driver or what car is sending this information. Also, one of the important things is that we don't want to fight with this market. We really are a partner of this market. We don't want to uh, provide the same services as that they are already providing. And for instance, no, we had Waze before, and we don't want to uh, compete against Wave. Uh, we want to be partners of Waze, and as a, as a fact of this, we already have signed an agreement with them in order to share this information. And our, our, really, our goal is to make this hub where some specific events can be uh, uploaded and can be shared with all the community. 
this is the hub that we are launching on the, on the next months. Uh, what we are going to do is to exchange data with this service layer that already we have, with OEMs, with uh, navigation systems, with anyone that has some of this information that we will show in the next slides of some of the use cases in order to upload it to this cloud and also to share it with a community of drivers or partners that they all have in this final layer, in the, in the road layer. We want to integrate and share the information. Uh, for instance, when we have a breakdown in the road, it's good if I can share it, if I am, for instance, I'm a waster, I can share it with Waze, and the rest of the wasters will know that I have a breakdown in a specific kilometer of some road. But only the users of Waze will know this information. What we really want to provide is that the whole drivers know this information. And it doesn't matter if you are a waster or it's the OEM that directly provides you this information. We want to share this information with all the drivers. It's important, of course, that we are not going to share all the information that these service providers are already providing to the drivers. It's just some cases where it really makes sense that we need a third party that aggregates and shares this information where there's no a business model already for this type of information. So that's a way that we add value to that business layer that already exists. So our current model is going to change. It's going to be uh, less heavy investment because we already we can share this information that adds value to our roadside units, but roadside units will, will tend to decrease the number that we have and will increase the number of data that comes directly from the vehicles. We will process it as we do it now, and we, share, we will share this information not through our variable message signs, but directly to the cars through our partners from the business service layers. These are some of the use cases that we are uh, going to launch in this platform. As I said before, we don't want to compete with the market. We are uh, partners of the market. And we think that these use cases make sense that we have to share this information because it's road safety related and there's not a business model associated with them. The first of them is information provided by the road users. For instance, as I said before, the example of, of the breakdown. Also planned roadworks. Now we have this information, although we don't share it in a, in a really dynamic way. Now we want to share it, the information that directly comes from the road workers that are going to uh, tell us that the exact moment where they're going to start the, the road works and also if they're going to make a road closer, a lane closer, all this information will be sent to this cloud and also shared with the rest of the vehicles in a personalized way. We also are open to, rece to receive some information directly from the vehicles. These, some of the OEMs are open to share this information. Others still are thinking about if, if, if this makes sense, but for instance, we could share the information from the, the fog lights or from the warning lights. In case we receive this information, we could send this information to the cloud and anticipate this information to the rest of the drivers that are approaching that a specific place where we have, a, for instance, an incident or a foggy area. Also, as I said before, now the, the current way of sharing this information with the drivers is through the variable message signs. Well, we can change that and expand the, the number of roads and kilometers where we can share that information because we, would, we can send now a direct message to any car in a personalized way, only the information that they really want to know. We can also share dynamic events. For instance, uh, when we have a, an ambulance or a, or a police vehicle, they can tell us that they are running behind us and so that we can let them pass. Also, for instance, vulnerable, vulnerable users. I would talk a little bit later about this specific road uh, use case. We have done an app that uh, puts into value this, uh, this case. Also, a static event, road closures, for instance, where there are some a specific event or, or a sport meeting. We have these road closures. We can also share this information directly with the drivers that are approaching to this road closure. And also recommended speed. This We have two use cases, one of congestions, where we can uh, specifically advise of the tail of the, of the congestion. And also, if we have information about the traffic lights, we can recommend the, the exact speed in order to get to pass through these traffic lights in the green phase. Let me just talk about one of the 
a concrete implementation of one of the use cases. It's the one that we serve dynamic information, and it's specifically uh, destined to protect vulnerable users, in this case, cyclists. We have launched an app. It's an easy app just to see and to show to this business layer the opportunities that they have to provide new services where uh, uh, cyclists, or in this case also pedestrians, they can advise their position, they can serve their position with our cloud, with our platform, and we will send it back to the drivers that are on the same path to tell them in advance that they are going to find a, a cyclist or a pedestrian in the road so they can adapt their, their speed and their driving to this, um, to this situation. It's one of the examples of this real-time information sharing where we can add value to the current models that we have now uh, through the, the classical way of finding these things. Now when we, we find a cyclist, we have to uh, quickly uh, update our, our way of driving. In this case, we had the enough time in order to update our driving. So it's really uh, an enhance of road safety for vulnerable users. And it's something that we can do from tomorrow. Well, just uh, as, a, uh, as a wrap up, uh, we think that we really have a great opportunity to enhance mobility and road safety. We have all the tools ready to provide these new services. We have the need for these uh, new cross industries alliances and private and public uh, alliances because none of us, nor the administration, nor one company is going to provide all the services. There's some need to share information and to make alliances, and in this case, Spain and the DGT is open for these alliances. The vehicle is going to become one of the main players. Uh, is, I think this is something that we, we all uh, know, but with all the exchange of information, the vehicle is going to be really important in this new mobility that is going to emerge. And finally, the, the platform that, uh, that I talked before, we have here on a stand. We, you can have more information about the, the specific use cases that we are going to launch. And we hope that on the next month, we will launch this, this platform. And it's open, as I said before, to the collaboration of all the market. And that's all. Thank you for your attention. Jaima, thank you very much. Uh, there were two points that, that I found particularly uh, profound. Uh, talking about Department for Transport, we mentioned the need for managing the ecosystem, for bringing different parties together yesterday. Um, and two things that really struck me was um, integration and sharing, where Department for Transport, where we see government actually evolving with, 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 um, with the development, where the government is taking the role of sharing the information Again, making that layer, regardless which app you're using, so making, making available the information that's relevant to different users, um, as well as being ahead with V2X, and especially vehicle to pedestrians, to cyclists, um, has been seen as one of the more further down the line topics, because we tend to talk about V2V first, um, and we start looking into further integration further down the line to see that the Department for Touch Transport actually is launching an app to make these things happen and to enable them. The next